In Chapter 2, we're going to begin our study of geometry. We're going to stick, stick mostly with plane geometry, but we are going to go into three dimensions towards the end of this unit. Our, our use in uh, geometry is, is vast in terms of our world, but especially when we study trigonometry towards the later portion of the semester, we need to be aware of angles, lines, um, just how they're associated with one another, how we name them, um, this, their sizes, uh, how, when they're positive, when they're negative, etc. So we're going to spend a lot of time with, with angles in this chapter. We're going to do some work with right triangles and circles and four-sided uh, four shapes, quadrilaterals. We're going to go into irregular shapes and then finally into three-dimensional shapes, pyramids, cones, spheres right circular cylinders, etc. So um, quite a fun chapter. I, I really enjoy it quite a bit. So we're going to spend a little bit of time defining, defining an angle. Um, it's generated by rotating a half of a line or a ray about its endpoint from an initial position. We rotate it to a terminal position. So I'm trying to show you here the initial position of this right angle and we rotate that ray or half a line to its terminal side to create this particular one which is a right triangle. And a right triangle, as you know I'm sure, um, forms a 90 degree angle um, at the vertex. An acute angle is an angle that is less than 90 degrees. Again, this symbol stands for less than. Um, and then an obtuse angle is an angle, I'm going to call it theta, that is um, less than 180 degrees but greater than 90 degrees. So here's my initial side and when I rotate that half a line here, I go beyond that 90 degree mark, but I don't get to that 180. So an obtuse angle, its terminal side is somewhere between 90 and 180. So it's a large angle, obtuse kind of sometimes says that for us. Um, next, you need to be aware of perpendicular lines. Um, are two lines that intersect to form a right angle between them. This is often the symbol we use to notate uh, perpendicular lines. Parallel lines are lines that do not intersect. And this is kind of, I used Word to create this document. This document has a few dilemmas. Uh, in handwritten form, usually when I show parallel lines, they're a little bit closer. So that symbolism stands for parallel lines. And we'll do a little bit of work with that later on. Supplementary angles, an example of that is in this picture right here. And I'm going to label some points on this picture. So I'm going to call this point A. I'm going to call this vertex point B. This is going to be called point C and I'm going to call the end of this ray point D. This is an example of supplementary angles. And if the sum of two angles is 180 degrees, then they are supplementary. And you can tell this is 180 degrees because ABC is a flat line. Um, I might say that angle A, B, D and angle C, B, D are supplementary. That would be something I could say. The next example is an example of complementary. These are complementary. The thing I left out here though is this right angle to show you that those two angles add to be 90 degrees. Then they are complementary. I'm going to label the the rays and the vertex here in this picture and I might say that angle ACB and angle BCD are complementary. Okay. Um, there's something else I want to speak about before we move on and that is, do you see how I called angle ACB, this angle right here? Do you see how I named it this right here? Would you notice that the letter C is in the center of the three letters? So the vertex is right in the center. 
I just want you to know that I didn't need to call it that. I could have called it also angle B C A versus A C B. It's a reverse of those letters, but angle uh, ver, um, letter C is still in the matter, middle, which is the vertex. So bottom line, when you name an angle by three letters, the middle letter has to be the one at the vertex, and these two letters can be on either end. That's a really important thing to understand in trigonometry and in geometry. Um, adjacent angles are two angles that have a common vertex and a common side between them. I'm going to show you an example of a picture of that on the next page. Two angles that have a common vertex. So I've turned the page and here's an example of two adjacent angles. I'm going to label this, the vertex as A. And I might see, do you see this notation right here? Angle BAD, which is this one right here, is adjacent to angle DAC. Let's see if I can get a different color. So here's DAC. C. Please note that they share that common side and they are therefore adjacent angles. Vertical angles are two, ang uh, two lines, I'm sorry, that cross to form equal angles on opposite sides of their point of intersection. I want to now use a different um, lettering for an angle so you can see a new approach, a different approach. So first of all, this angle would be equal to this angle right here. I'm trying to draw an arc. Um, and I can also name them by Greek letters. I think I'm going to call this one theta sub 1 and this one theta sub 2. And because these are two straight lines that intersect, Right here, the opposite angles of that point of intersection are always equal to one another. I'm going to go ahead now and do that again, but I'm going to talk about this angle and this angle. So these show that these angles are equal to one another. Um, and I'm going to call the, this one beta sub 1 and beta sub 2. So because those are vertical angles, two lines cross to form them then beta sub 1 would equal beta sub 2 as well. So very important to look for. Uh, some of you are going to study trusses with me um, in your time at KCC, and so we're going to have vertical angles in those trusses. Finally, parallel lines that are intersected by a transversal um, might look like this, and I'm going to illustrate that this might be called line 1, and line 2, and I'm saying to you that line 1 is parallel to line 2. That's what I'm saying. And those parallel lines are intersected by this line called the transversal. So this is called the transversal. And there's some interesting things about these, and they can be found in parallelograms, um, and that is uh, some interesting things about angles. This time I'm going to name the angles with numbers is all, and what we're going to do is uh, like angle 1 is this obtuse angle right here, and angle 2 is this acute angle right here. Notice angle 1 equals angle 4, and angle 2 equals angle 3 because these are two lines intersecting one another. But let's keep going. So next, I'd like you to be comfortable and aware of the fact that some of these have names, and um, they are, we can find congruent, congruent angles. Alternate interior angles are those angles that are inside the parallel lines and on alternate sides of the transversal. So angle 3 and angle 6 are called alternate interior angles and they are equal to one another. So um, I'm going to state that angle 3 equals angle 6. Well, aren't there two more? that are alternate interior angles. They're on either side of this, but they're inside the parallels. Yeah, it's angle 4 and angle 5. Those are also alternate interior angles. Alternate exterior angles 
are those that are on the outside of the parallel lines and equal to one another. So that represents angle 1 and angle 8 and angle 2 and angle 7. Those are equal angles. Angle 1 equals angle 8 and they're called alternate exterior and angle 2 equals angle 7. Finally, corresponding angles, and I'm, I'm going to just draw an arrowhead because I can't keep the diagram on the screen, so I'll just do this to write our angles. Corresponding angles are those angles that are equal in size. They're on the same side of the transversal, and they're on the same side of their respective parallel line. So an example of two corresponding angles that are equal to one another would be angle 2 and angle 6. Don't they look equal to one another? Those are called corresponding. Again, on the same side of the transversal, and they're on the same side of their own respective parallel lines. There are four sets of corresponding angles. Angle 2 is equal to angle 6. I hope you can write down the other three. Angle 4 is equal to angle 8. Angle 3 is equal to angle 7. And finally, angle 1 is equal to angle 5. So we've gone through quite a bit of information about angles, perpendiculars, um, uh, parallel lines, uh, complementary, supplementary. I'm going to stop here and our next segment is going to talk again about a theorem that involves parallel lines intersecting transversals that we use often in our trigonometry and geometry work.